Welcome back to another train vlog. So as you've seen from the title, uh, we have now deployed seven train strategies. So I'm very happy that they're running live now because now we have some train results to share. And so in today's vlog, what we're going to talk about is our GS versus MS strategy. This is a strategy that we've been trading for the past two weeks and the results uh, so far are very good. And then we're going to have a look at the other six strategies that we've developed. So in this video, I'm going to share the process, how we test it and then deploy the train strategies. So let's get started. Finally, all our training bots are running live. So this week we have deployed seven training bots and currently the results look pretty nice. We have a profit of 270 euro and we're going to see how the positions will progress. In this statement by Interactive Brokers, you can find the trading performance uh, of our strategies. So here for the month September, you see that we've increased the capital size to 50,000 euro. And that is because we are now trading seven strategies and we are required to increase uh, the margin to sustain these strategies. So let's now go down to the mark to market performance summary. And you can see that we are already trading more than two stocks. In fact, we have one, two, three, four, five, six stocks. But let's now first have a look at the GS versus MS strategy. So GS is a symbol for Goldman Sachs and MS is a symbol for Morgan Stanley. So how we trade is that we hedge these two stocks against each other and hopefully the net return of these two stocks, uh, you know, provides some profit. And so on Goldman Sachs, uh, we uh, are minus 139 euro but on morgan stanley we are plus 329 euro so if we take the net sum of these two positions we are about 190 euro in profit so you can also see that we are overall in profit on these other stocks as well and then later i will explain more in detail what these stocks are and why they correlate with, with each other but in total, our current performance on stocks is plus 252 euro. On this spreadsheet, you can see our current portfolio. So these are all the seven strategies that we are currently trading. So let's start with this one, uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, you already know this one. And so the second strategy we're trading is AMD versus NVIDIA. Uh, the third one we thought, okay, let's try Hilton and Marriott. This is the hotel industry and then MasterCard against Visa. For the consumer sector, we've chosen Walmart against Amazon. And then these two stocks, these are maybe not so known to the most of you, but uh, we looked into the metal mining industry. And here we try to hedge BHP against FCX, and I add descriptions BHP Group and Freeport Macro Rand Inc. And the last one is WPM against PAAS which is Wheaton Precious Metal Corp against Pan American Silver. So these are our, our current strategies, and I'm got, just going to show you our setup, how it looks like on our server. Here we are on our virtual private server, and you can see that we have seven Python terminals running. So each Python script is handling its own strategy, right? So for example, this Python script would be the GS versus MS, and the second one would be AMD versus NVIDIA. As you can see, currently we are waiting for the US market open, so they will start trading 15.45, which is 15 minutes after the US market open. And so whenever the trading bots start trading, uh, we will then see the trades here in our TWS platform, and here you can see the current positions on TWS. Now that you know our seven strategies that we are trading, you might wonder how we came up with those strategies, right? Because uh, the most difficult part about statistical arbitrage is looking for two stocks that are in some way co-integrated and then running the backtest. So the reality is you just have to, you know, look for some stocks in a certain industry and then you would first run a co-integration test after that, you would then run a backtest using Bollinger Bands, and then you would evaluate the backtest. You now you would look at the returns, the risk, the number of trades to make sure that the strategy is consistent. And then when you're happy with the results, you would then deploy the strategy live. So let me show you one example how we backtested a strategy using the system. 
So let's just proceed to our Jupyter Notebook where I can explain the strategies more in detail. So in this Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to show you how we backtested the MasterCard against Visa strategy. So here we have two card payment providers and obviously they're very known. And so open one in this data frame is our open price of MasterCard and open two is Visa. So now you see here that uh, MasterCard has a higher stock price than Visa. And if we plot uh, the prices, so X represents MasterCard stock price and Y represents Visa stock price, we see that as MasterCard ri rises, so does Visa. And we see some proportionality. And so what that means is that we can try to compute the ratio in order to compute the spread. So the red line here is our linear regression. And so if we apply this linear regression, uh, you will find that MasterCard is approximately 1.64 uh, times the amount of Visa. So to compute the spread, we take the price of MasterCard minus the price of Visa times the ratio, which is 1.64. And then to show you what the spread looks like, and we can just scroll down here. This is the spread between those two stocks. And so up here, we also see a chart of the historical prices. So open one is MasterCard and open two adjusted is Visa times the ratio. And here we can clearly see the relationship between those two stocks. And this allows us to apply a statistical arbitrage strategy. So Let's also show you this section where we are running the co-integration test. So here we're running the AD Fuller uh, function to check if the spread is stationary. And uh, the way I run a stationarity test in this example is not applying the test on the whole data series, but I'm running a stationarity test for every month, right? So when the test result is one, then uh, our test result says that it is likely to be stationary. And if the test result is zero, then it is mostly not likely to be stationary. And what you can see here is that we have some months where the test result shows one, but we have more months where it is zero. And then uh, you, you would ask yourself, so why would I trade a strategy where most of the time the result is not stationary? And so my reply to that uh, question is that we are not trying to look for unicorns. Our objective is to find a strategy that when the months uh, are, you know, show stationarity, that we make more money during those months than during the months where we might be losing. So overall, if the strategies make more money when the test result shows one, then when, for example, don't make money when it is zero, it is still an edge for us that we want to exploit. And to show you an example, uh, I will show you a chart here where we are running our Bollinger Bands uh, strategy, right? So here we have the generated trades. And you do remember that, for example, for like four or five months, our stationarity test showed zero. And this is the month where you can see here that it's clearly trending down and we are making losses. So the red lines here represent the losses. But when we look at, for example, a period here, we see that the spread is very stationary, right? So it just oscillates around this level here. And all those green lines here represent small profits. So, and if we visualize these profits on the chart here, we see that in the beginning here, this is the time where you know, our ADF test showed zeros, right? The zeros. So just because our ADF test shows zero doesn't mean that our strategy is losing. In fact, we are actually just break even, which is great because when the times come, when we have, you know, stationary months like this, 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 and this, then we see that we are able to make money during these periods. So this is just one example, you know, how to work with the AD Fuller test. So just because it is zero doesn't mean that you can't trade it. It just means that there's a chance that your strategy might not be making as much money or might be just break even. 
but when the spread is stationary, then there's a high chance that we will make a lot of money. So we are not looking for purely ones here. That is purely just, again, looking for unicorns. And as long as we build a portfolio of many strategies, you know, so many stocks, uh, many pairs, then we are increasing, increasing the consistency of our trading. And this is what we want to look for. So after you are happy with your backtest and analysis and you want to trade the strategy live, here is an example of our training bot template in Python. So this is a training bot template that we are using for our live trading. It is a simple Python script that connects to the uh, TWS platform and it is uh, you know, uh, subscribing to our two simple pairs, then computing spread. It then computes the Bollinger Bands and then it will start trading according to our strategy logic. So if you're interested in that, uh, there's a download link for members on my website. So feel free to check that out. So I hope that you've enjoyed the analysis on one of our strategies. And currently uh, we are after US market open. And as you can see, our trading bots have opened a few more positions. So today uh, we are in a position on five out of seven of our strategies. And we'll see, you know, when the other strategies will open the trades as well. But currently it looks like that we are around break even and it's, you know, a question of time until, you know, we will see the results. And I'll keep you posted about that. In the meantime, uh, so if you're interested in the analysis and the trading bot, you can check out my website. And also I have some exciting news. I have released a new trade course on my website and it is for free. So if you're a beginner and want to trade algorithmically on MT5 using Python, you can find the link to the course in the description below. So thank you very much and see you in the next trading vlog.